announcement. We are open to have private sessions. I am opening new dates on my schedule. We have a brand new automated booking system. No more long waits for confirming the booking. That's right, everyone. Automated booking system is here. Go to andrewbartzis.com. We look forward to seeing you in a private session. I would like to welcome you all to join me on the July the 13th and 14th for a psychic surgery transformational workshop with myself, Dale Tobin. Are you ready to elevate your spiritual journey with psychic surgery? Some of the practice will include sending treatments forwards and backwards in time alongside working with trauma, ancestral balancing and meeting your psychic surgery team of ancestors, how to read energy and learn the reading skills of a session, psychic surgery treatments on others, how to learn the grounding skills of being an energy healer. This workshop is available for practitioners or even if you're not a practitioner and just want to learn to heal yourself with new techniques. To book your space, head over to daletobin.com. You can also pay in two parts. And if you wish to try out psychic surgery sessions, I'm offering a discount on sessions leading up to the workshop. So you can experience it first for yourself. I look forward to seeing you on the unique journey. Thank you. Dale, I forgot to introduce my show totem. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Oh. Okay. we are having um, some internet difficulties here, guys. Because I just went yeah. oh, here. He is. Dale. He wants you to introduce. Still looking for his microphone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Talking Stick show this Tuesday. 
Um, I'm very pleased to welcome um, co-host here. We've got Dale, who is somewhere in the ethers there. We've got Amy Kruzik from Hello, UCN. Hello, everyone. Hi, Amy. Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Yes. No, can, cannot hear you, Dale. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. we can hear yeah, you. Yeah, I've got some internet now. Sorry about that. My internet dropped. Literally, as soon as the show started, my internet <laughs> dropped. So, yeah. Hello, I'm here. <laughs> Great. And we've got... Andrew Botts, it's again with us. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Yeah, good, good, good. How are you guys doing? Good. We're doing good. good. So what's what we got on tonight, Dale? So we have for you all a live call-in show. So what's going to happen is we're going to paste a link in the chat and you have the opportunity to get um, to speak to us, get a reading. Um, so the invitation is in the chat now. So, yeah, how are we doing, guys? Here we are. July the 2nd, how is everyone doing? Amy, what's new with you? Oh, what's new? Hmm. What's new, what's new? What is new with Amy? On? Um. Well, we have a trip coming, a trip. Oh my gosh, it's a trip for me. But a trip to, <laughs> we're flying. We have an event coming up, guys, yes. in Oregon. So we are working behind the scenes with that. That is happening in October. 26. There we go. Thank you, Joel. Yes, that is what's happening. We are working okay. on What can they expect from that, Amy? What What are we doing there? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we will be doing the Living the Mystical Life Daily, and this is the number three. Um, so it'll be new material and pretty much new people, huh? Because I've never, you guys have never been, yeah? Laura has, mm -hmm. sorry. But anyway, so we're going to do that. And we're going to do then the ambisonic sound with the Lucia light. And that's going to go, I think that's going to spread over a couple of days. Like a lot of in-depth healing going on with that. Yep, very in-depth healing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll last for a while, right? <laughs> it's going to last a while and change things within your uh, DNA. Yeah. yeah yeah so um plus we got some other stuff that are little surprises don't we guys we do yeah yeah we do yeah that was an <laughs> affirmation <laughs> as opposed, as opposed to a revocation <laughs> we do we have surprises <laughs> laura yeah. will be doing the redo revocation <laughs> <laughs> you know um, that you'll just have to come and experience with us these surprises. Yeah, be a great yeah. time for them to come and um, not and just with the living team. the mystical life daily, yeah. but you'll, yeah. you'll be doing living the mystical life daily before we do the uh, we show you some of the combined healing stuff, or, or I know it will will weave into it, which will be a wonderful combination because you know when we use the Lu Lucia light, we use. Um, a lot of living the mystical life daily material, don't we? Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. it's a, a really, really good combo. And that's why it's called combined yeah. healing, because we put many of these modalities together and you'll be able to see them. Yeah. And the sonic yeah. 4D sound. Yes. And you can go to the QR code at the top left corner of the screen and scan that for all the information about the event. Yes. And I'm just excited to meet everybody, you know? We see these names, you know, that pop up and it's like, oh, my goodness, to see people in the flesh again. That's nice. In the flesh. Yeah. <laughs> the flesh. <laughs> no, what else make, making memories. As well. Like yeah. making new memories like we were yes. looking over Scotland from last year. And that's yeah. just yeah. memories. One last year ago today, one year, ago, so one year ago, one year ago today, we were getting to our first crappy hotel. <laughs> yeah. Remember the, the, them arguing outside the window? The, those those Scottish people arguing outside the window. Yes. Laura? In, yeah, in Inverness. Yeah, it's lovely because everybody on the WhatsApp, everybody who came, um, mm -hmm. is still in contact, which is fabulous. We'll have to do another one, Andrew, sometime. Mm -hmm. There's no, still people asking because they because they yeah, missed yeah. it, and it was yeah. really really unique and quite a very special time. Maybe yeah. a living the mystical life daily bus tour. Uh, well, all Ooh. that's in the plan and the works. We'll figure it out. 
Yeah. The, the, the challenge yeah. of doing all this is you got you generally got to plan nearly a year ahead of time to make it work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I like what Dale said about building memories. Like, yeah. what did you do inside? Like, really um, and journaling about it, right? Because we don't always remember them, but when they're impactful, like this event coming up, it kind of like sticks with you. That's right. Where, where does it stick? What What's happening? It, the chemical changes in your body, right? The brain. Yes. Everything. You're making new memories. Yeah. New neural pathways. Connecting to old three. friends and new family, new spirit family. Yeah. 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 That's right. I do love so that. So there we go. There we so go. So we've got some callers in. So firstly, oh. I will we will bring on um Tali to a second. Hello, Tali. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? Yes. Or is yes, this better? Can hear okay. You. Um, yeah, I just kind of recently found you guys. Yeah, yeah. So Where are you calling I'm that? not too familiar with everything. I just started looking. Oh, or I'm in Oregon. Oh, oh wow. Are you? Yeah. Oregon. Wow. Um, Brilliant. Where where in Oregon are you? Um, well, right this moment I'm in Eugene, but I'm usually somewhere between Portland and Eugene. Um Okay. So yeah, let me think of the question I wanna um, share or ask. Um, so basically I, oh, there's a lot of questions. I've kind of hit a wall with my healing, like self healing. Um, and I can't, I can sort of think of like logical reasons behind it, but I haven't been able to find my own solutions unless I really go outside of things. But then once I go really outside of things, it's almost like, well, that's, that's just, not possible it's not sustainable and then i kind of go back into like my limited self um so i don't know if that makes any sense um i've just haven't figured out a way around it yet and so i don't know um maybe i'm not clear enough so what, what when you say you try to things ask. to go outside of yourself when you do you talking about doing inner work like what are you talking about when you're trying to do healing yeah, like, um, say, like, I'll travel outside of town and I'll, like, it will, like, deliberately be to, like, relax my nervous system and just not be in my head all the time. And then I'll either get a lot of solutions and I'm like, okay, this will take X amount of years to implement. And I don't know. It's, like, a huge gap that I won't be able. It's, like, I'll have the clarity. And I'm like, okay, that's a huge plan. How am I going to get from A yeah, to Z? That, and that's, then, that, yeah. that, 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 that's actually an argument for your limitations. Oh, okay. So believing in the gap. Very, yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'll never be able to do that type of energy is an argument for the limitation to never begin. And that's okay. signifying that what you actually have to confront is the argument for limitation first. If it does take a long time, then fine. I have to be committed to the journey. And you've got to okay. be able to counter the frequencies. Um, do you have people that ever do body work on you? Um, I used to go to like a chiropractor and i what i find happens is it it's i it will last for about 5 minutes afterwards and then i go back to stiffness um are you like a short really quickly. are you a short are you a short petite person i'm 52 53 five, somewhere in there so you're short and, i'm you're like short, 115 you're yeah <laughs> you're short short and petite um let me be blunt for a second how many meals a month week do you skip uh, quite a few. I, I have always struggled with like eating on time, eating enough. Cause I, I don't as digest long as it you, very well. As, as long as you are not gaining a diet and truly confronting yourself with the argument for limitations, you're going to go nowhere in your healing. Okay. Right? Like when I'm looking know. at your energy, your liver, your liver has like black spots on it, which means you probably skip at least half the monthly meals you need to have. And that means you are at starvation level. Oh, interesting. You're okay. You're at, you're anemic. You're actually anemic, meaning you don't have enough iron to produce yeah. blood cells, which means you're constantly in a state of forever depression. Interesting. I mean, because I eat protein eat. every day, but um, you don't eat enough because you skip your meals. You got to look at it as a period of a month, not day to day to day. 
Okay, so... And you need to have sufficient food for six straight weeks and the six weeks after that and the six weeks after and the six weeks after that for it to actually make a difference in your greater growth, mentally, emotionally, and physically. Okay, so my question is, usually when I do eat sufficiently, it'll be fine for a little bit. Like, I'll be able to think clearly and feel clearly, but then I'll get, like, I won't be able to digest it, get sick later. No, nope, um, that's your program's talking and not allowing you to do it because you don't actually get the type of exercise that creates peristalsis in your intestinal tract. Peristalsis is oh. what it takes to digest your food. And then because you also don't drink enough water, you're highly acidic. Okay. So you have a, okay. you have a series of programs that are setting you up for failure before you even start. That makes sense. Yes, because I was the, my first thought was, do I have people around me that are stressing me out that are preventing me from, ex, you know, doing X, Y, Z? No, that's that's externalizing the issues that are internal with you, meaning you're not okay. wanting to confront the issue is you and the issue is you and the issue is you. And you're okay. going to externalize it for as long as you can until you face you. OK, so I do need to eat more. So when you say exercise, because I walk every day, but do you mean more like impact, like really high intensity for shorter bursts kind of thing? No. Or? See, now, now you're showing you're the person of extremes. You only okay. know extremes. You don't know intermediary. So okay. you, need to do, you need to do a combination of cardio and muscle building, which is actual, which is actual like, like, like weight training. Okay. All right. That makes sense. You need that to was... be able to build. Mu you need to be able to build muscle and then eat enough food that. So when you don't eat food, the first thing the body does is eat your muscle, and right now because you've eaten so much muscle, all it's doing is eating your core muscles, and that's also why you can't create peristalsis and digest food. Okay. Your core, the mu the muscles around your intestinal tract, have withered away to almost nothing. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Which is going to create back problems and all sorts of other things, hip dysplasia, etc. Yeah, I, I started to get some scoliosis a while back, so that makes sense. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. wow, okay, that gives me a lot to work on then. Okay, thank you. So what you do, here's, the, here's the recipe for success wellness for you. You have to, to literally record every meal that you eat and see – are you counting 40 grams of protein a day for 30 for six straight weeks? Okay. You have to see how many meals you truly skip. And if you end up skipping meals because you're having digestive issues, you have to journal about it. What is the real issue about me digesting today? What you're going to discover is you have an emotional rejection of food. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you okay. get out. Uh, out out of the out of the acidic nature you're in, meaning you need food, you need water, and you need core build, core uh, exercise rebuild, and then you got to begin the journey of challenging yourself to know what your arguments for limitations are, and then create arguments for success. Okay. First, so part I have to start of, with the body first, basically. Well, your body won't go much further if you don't take care of it. Okay. Um. So, yeah, I can already see my fog, mind limiting the brain me. Fog, <laughs> the brain fog that you're having and the over-talking brain, that's from an acidic body with too many programs running. Okay. And is that is that the cause of things like people have told me I have ADHD and stuff? Is that the cause of that kind of thing? No, you've created ADHD to externalize all the pain and suffering you're going through internally. Okay. That makes sense. Because I've known were you, that. Were, yeah. were you abused as a kid? Um, I, uh, <laughs> I'll say yes, but I've rationalized all the forgiveness and all that kind of stuff. So all um, of this is related to that. Okay. That makes sense. How do, you yeah. how do you think, how do you think I know all of this? Well, obviously, cause you read the, the records and all that. That's how I found you. Um, right. but yeah, you've done your, your own work. I hear, so. your, I, I hear it in your voice. Oh, okay. And there's an image, there's a, there's a light based image that, shows a code of what's wrong with you. And just wow. like I knew you were a short and petite person, just like I, I knew all this stuff. If you don't counter the food issue, life is going to be a hell of a challenge for you. Yeah, if you don't it already conquer has. the water <laughs> issue, the food and water issue, life is going to be a challenge for you. Once you okay. get sufficient food and water for long enough, the inner work will become easier. What okay. you're going to face is the abuse that you went through in the early forms of forgiveness. There's still a stored energy in you. 
The yeah. biggest bang for spending money on yourself as a healing will be a, a process called rolfing. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, yeah, isn't that it's like a, it's like an intense type of massage or something? Yeah, yeah. deep tissue. Okay. Well, okay. it's going to target the areas that are storing the actual abuse energy as electrical frequency. Okay. okay. They generally want to do a, what's called a 10 series. You're probably going to need two 10 series. I'll tell you that right now. Okay. If you are able to, in the next 10 weeks, successfully change your food, do the Ralphing, at the end of that 10 weeks, you will be a different human being. And there will be a light at the end of the tunnel for you and a new journey. Okay. That gives me something Laura, to Laura, Amy, Dale, on. do you guys want to add anything? Well, I was just going to bring up about there's a lot of adrenal things, some sort of like reaction. Sorry, is there a time delay here? Sorry. You, yeah, there is. You you go, Laura. I'll go. Okay. So, Andrew, so when you're a lot in the adrenals, does that also make you acidic? Well, adrenals are there because she doesn't have enough food or water, and the body has to go, 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 go. So, right. yes, there's adrenal gland burnout. Yeah. And adrenal that's... gland burnout is what creates the talky, talky, talky mind. Yeah. And then what I'm seeing, Talia, is that also brings up this great amount of self doubt. And there's no sort of patience with you in some ways related to this. It's like, like an instant gratification thing. So when it doesn't turn out, then you're like, oh, this doesn't work. Um, there's limitations in this. You, you're you not seeing long term into the future. So I'm just picking up on that, that give up. She's energy. a giver. She's a giver upper. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to suggest a couple of things that just to slow you down on that. And one is a real basic, just a meditation every day. And also in your plan, um, it's, you know, we do live in a limitless universe. Things are available to us. So maybe the plan is just too big at the moment for where you are. And maybe just looking at some more baby steps and then, when you achieve something in whatever plan it is you've got going, then, you know, that's a victory. And that the energy from that victory is going to shore you up for the next step that you want to take. So it's sort of slowing yourself down, especially the like the heart meditations and so on, to get you out of that adrenal-based uh, reactions. Good. It's good stuff. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Do I sound all right? Um Yes. Yeah, yeah, cool. The internet's gone all weird. But yeah, so uh, so adding to that would be you allowing joy and happiness to be part of your life. It's like you've kind of let go of joy and happiness and being in the moment and enjoying it. So it would be a great idea to do start doing internal prayer, external prayer, where you're saying out loud, I'm accepting joy and happiness today. I'm allowing myself to place love into my food. I'm changing this day from the old days and creating a new day some sort of prayer ritual or writing to create to get you out of where you're at. And all of that stuff Andrew said about building yourself up, building your Kundalini up, eating, uh, but allowing it to be fun as well. Start embracing fun. What's fun to you? And start allowing yourself to smile while you're doing it as well. And realizing mm. sometimes you see, it's like your serious frequency around you. And it's about you can actually create a different, different aura by allowing yourself to say the words, change the frequencies. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That gives me something to focus on. So thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. I want to ask you I one have, more question. Oh, I want to ask you another question. Do you still have yeah. nightmares? Um, I do randomly. It's uh, not consistent. Um, do you remember them? Um, I write down some of them, like I have a dream journal. Um, probably the last one I had was maybe a month ago. I don't know if I can recall it off the top of my head. No, you, but... you, don't, you don't need to recall. It's something that's in your frequency and your aura. And it's something you've put yourself into. Okay. This is a self-created hell realm in your dream okay. space. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> and it comes from a state of depression you went through post-abuse, not understanding what was going on with you. And mm, what Laura was yeah. saying to you about little victories and what Dale was saying to you about the depression, 
you can begin part of a practice that adds happiness to your life. But what you're going to discover, the nightmares might come back and be more prevalent because you don't believe yourself worthy of healing and worthy of life. And it's an ongoing internal issue. Even though you want to live, the conscious aware you, there's a deep-seated grain of I'm not worthy for this place anymore. And you've mm -hmm. got to learn to counter that with joy and happiness. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I just had one question for you, Tully. Maybe to journal about, this just came to me. Um, I wrote it down, but maybe write about how you distract yourself from spending time with yourself and, care, and caring mm. for yourself. You don't have to answer it now. And, you know, maybe just journal about that. Cause that's a, that could go, you could go a long time writing that. Um, and also another question came was, is life going the way you want it to go? Um, no, but it's significantly better than it was say five, 10 years ago. So I know that I am growing. I just, I know there's so much more. So um, I do hit these little walls and I, now that I know they're self-created, I just have to do this other work now. So um, yeah. Yeah. And can I just ask one more? Um, I, I was just curious as to why in the, in the beginning you said something about you drive to co cool down your nervous system. Do you know why you do that to relax it? Why you drive um, away? Yeah. Like I just, I, well, I'm on the spectrum, so I'm like noises and people and stuff, which I can accept on a conscious level. It's just like, yeah, this is human life, but I did have a really hard time relaxing. Like I've tried everything around people that's, to relax. That's because you're um, acidic and over, over, overactive. And you've been that way for so long. Your body doesn't know, know a normal state. Okay. Yeah. See that, now, that makes you've sense. You've reached a, you've reached a hypersensitivity moment that everyone is like, you can smell the mouse fart next door. That's how tuned yeah. up you are. Yep. Okay. Okay. That, that gives me some hope because I thought it wasn't changeable. <laughs> oh, no. Is, yes. So when I, when I told you about food before, it's not about changing your diet. It's about recording your meals and being okay. extremely disciplined about it. And it's not really about calories. It's about protein. Okay. So generally a, a woman is 30 to 40, 30, 40 grams of protein a day. You are going to have terrible troubles with that. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have terrible troubles with it. And all of those are self-created issues. All of the indigestion, it's all self-created. If you start doing actual, uh, actual weight, 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 build, uh, weight training, where you're learning to build core muscles and individual muscles combined with an aerobic, an actual aerobic workout where you get your heart rate up for over 30 minutes, you will begin to have an appetite again. You may okay. want to consider cannabis for an appetite process during this journey. Okay. Okay. Don't get addicted to it. You just need it for the appetite enhancing and allows you to settle food. Okay. That's good to know that actually, that actually is, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And, okay. and like I said before, the, the, the biggest bang for your dollar spent on healing is going to be rolfing where you're at right now. Okay. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll let you guys get to the next people. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Call in again and tell us how yeah. things are going in a couple months. Okay. Yeah, thank, you, Tully. thank you, Tully. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. All right, have a good one. Yeah, you too. You too. Bye now. Bye bye. Thanks, so we're gonna have on next. We'll bring on Tara. Hello, Tara. Are you there? Hello. <laughs> Tara. Hello, everybody. Hey, Tara. Where are you calling from? Um, I'm calling from South Africa. Um, I have been on once before. I don't know if you guys remember me. Um, yeah. So yeah. I have <laughs> I have a million questions as always, but um, <laughs> one of the main issues that I've really been struggling with is uh, I've been, like cultivating a daily practice. I've been doing like.
Can you hear me? <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so I was I just hear. wondering, like, I got a, I got a lot of um, information from the last caller because those, those were quite a few of the questions that I had that I'm also still struggling with. But um, <clears throat> so I've been cultivating this daily practice, uh, doing meditations, um, doing some. But I am still struggling so much with like learning to trust myself. So I was kind of just wondering, like, I, I feel also like uh, the last caller was just saying, like, I keep eating this, this brick wall. And so I've been doing like hypnosis. I've been doing, um, what's that rapid that I EMDR, like trying to go deeper into, um, like resolving some of the old trauma. I did a, a one of Dale's course thingies and that really helped me a lot. So like I, I make use of that quite frequently, but <clears throat> I still, yeah, I just keep eating this brick wall <laughs> every single time. So I was wondering if you guys had any advice for me. How old are you? I'm 31. Were you born in South Africa? Yes, I was born in Cape. Um, the walls that you are hitting, similar to the other collar, are, are all self-created. You don't value mm. yourself worthy to go beyond the wall. And there's a deep emotional trauma that happened when you were quite young that gave you this devaluing process, dehumanization process. And until you confront you are worthy and make that, a, that a, a long time mantra that truly means something to you, these walls are going to get thicker and thicker. Do you have any daily suggestions of how I could do that? Well, daily practice mm -hmm. helps you pick away at the wall one, one brick at a time. Okay. But in your mind, do you want to take the whole the wall down in one try? There is no one technique <laughs> will take the wall down at one time. And it's going to require commitment, okay. courage, neither of which are mystical. They're all choices you have to make every day. And you got to stop giving up on yourself because you are worthy. And until you develop worthiness with commitment and courage behind it, these obstacles are only going to get stronger and harder. Okay? You have a daily practice. Now you have to commit to your worthiness. Yes. Okay. So what something interesting is that um, oh, I have uh, a very long history of sexual abuse. Um, I think I did go into this yeah. uh, in the last time I called in. So a lot of abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. I grew up in a very toxic family. Um, <clears throat> I've kind of got no contact with most of them. Um, and not physically abusive relationship just for four years now. Um, I do have Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I have a video of abuse. So, and that has been like working on something that goes away. Well, it starts with valuing and self worth. You got to do the self worth worth work with the commitment and courage to back it up. Do you have much time for yourself, Tara, like away from the kids at all? Do you get any time for yourself? I have been taking <laughs> the time for myself. I think it makes sense with the unworthiness thing that I generally have not wanted to take time because I've always, like, even when I do take an hour, I have such, such guilt. Everyone else me and i think our people too need me <laughs> so you, that i don't I, myself but 
Because mm-hmm. yeah, when absolutely. you take that, when you actually have that time for yourself, you're not actually giving yourself time because you're still li- interlinked with all your children, still thinking about them and so on. Um, so it would be a great idea for you to actually, so are you in, so what type of setup is it? Have you got availability for people to look after the kids while you go away for a day or go away for a few hours? Um, technically, I am supposed to away from the kids at this very moment in time. I took two weeks um, and g- uh, gave them to their father. <laughs> and then I'm with um, the Good. baby, who's with uh, his grandmother then and his father at the moment. I am on my own right. Really nice. Good <laughs> to call in because I have been in because I also started this thing called Authentic Woman and using some of these things that I've been using to help other people specific, which is also really deeper into my healing. But my, my, this fear, this self, or the feeling of worth that's been coming up for me since any of the things. Do you find it in your journey that? Do you find it in your journey that you give up sometimes, Tara, and stop doing the practice? Yes. Yeah. Was like I was listening. I was like, oh my. Gosh, <laughs> uh, the I give up daily, and then I get up again because I literally don't have a choice. <laughs> but yeah, cultivating resilience, just trying to not give up. Tara, what do you do for fun? What have you got that's away from spirituality? What's that? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> You got a sense of humor, Tara. That's a t-shirt, that. Yeah. So, <laughs> the, this is, is so, so funny because... So, so, Something where you just laugh. What makes you laugh? What you do that's fun? So I, I don't anymore. <laughs> um, I used to do um, art and things, but... I find that because I am like the breadwinner in my family, um, it's been a lot more difficult to justify taking spiritual time and then taking, <laughs> you know, just chill time. I've been actually getting that message a lot that like a lot of my healing lies in playing again. And I honestly have no idea how to play because like Andrew was saying, I was about six years old when I started going through the abuse. So I didn't actually have the opportunity to be a child. So I don't know what play looks like. <laughs> Trying to get into it with the example. kids, but there's always this. So You haven't been in the sandbox. So what I'm saying is maybe you need to swap some of the spiritual time just to get the fun time. Because that is also spiritual, but without also... an agenda. Mm-hmm. Mm. just to enjoy yourself to to mm. laugh and play and relax and that will bring start to bring back some of the trust for yourself mm. so I, I want to add you- something here so we, we regularly talk about stick up people's arses you have a stump up your arse okay? <laughs> oh, I know. you're it's so serious <laughs> It's 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 gonna grow. It's gonna grow into a giant tree, okay, and get branches all over the inside of you. You're doing too mm. much spiritual work without the successes from the spiritual work because of the worthiness issues. You're not worthy enough to play. You're not worthy enough to be an innocent child. The only spiritual work you should be doing now is worth, worth value and worth energy. And you are worthy enough to take a day off. You are worthy enough to sleep in. You are worthy enough to cry today. You are worthy enough to mourn the loss of your childhood. You are worthy enough to have a fun day. And you got to make those a series of mantras that you repeat daily. Okay. 
<laughs> the other inner work you got to stop. Do you got to a... stop doing it. Okay. I'm way too serious. <laughs> yes. Thirty one year. That's why it's a um, I have one. stick. I mean, <laughs> I've been having a lot. Yeah, because you're you're, you're having a panic attacks. Ago. It's because you're having panic attacks. Yeah. And if you're reaching the stage, you're having chest-based pain Is and there anything... panic attacks. Oh, you have a you have a a rock and a hard place ahead of you. Okay, you won't take time off for yourself, but you need to de-stress yourself. You need to value your worth. Is me living and these children having a mother? valuable to me to you and if you want those children to have a mother mm. you need to take care of yourself that's what the choice ahead of you yeah you want to be a healthy mother and you want to be a mother and watch those children so, grow old take care of yourself Like just physically? Well, just like we said before, In you don't take of time like off. You don't do wise. anything for yourself. Yeah. When was well, the last time you had body work? Time mm -hmm. off. Disconnection, last... happy time. When was the last time you had any work done on your body at all? I think I had a massage like a year, two years. Years ago, a year ago, I think it's two years ago. So that's something you're going to have to change yeah. and start empowering yourself and actually booking sessions and getting someone to actually do body work on you to help release and relax you. And like, it's like you're just full of stress and tension. And it's like you're always in this hyper state of anxiety. And it's about how you can get out of that hyper state of anxiety into a state of relaxation. Um, and be like Andrew said, but yeah, be there for your kids when they're older. You've got to take this so seriously now and actually make those steps. Take time out, go see someone, go get help, go get someone to do some body work on you, some massage regularly. It's very, very important for you. Walk the talk mm -hmm. and talk the walk. The irony is, the irony is, is this two weeks where was supposed to be that but instead of doing that i found reasons to to not go away and so i got like a message i've been i feel like i've been communicating with i don't know my inner self i call it my other toddler the toddler that i really want to be one day <laughs> that tells me that i can't be that one day and i kind of got this a similar message that i really need to go and and take time for myself and then I decided to do it. We, we came to Joburg, um, which is where my husband's uh, mother lives. And then I was supposed to fly to, to Durban and, and go do the whole, like, spend time with myself. And and then I just kept coming up with excuse after excuse as to why I couldn't. And now we're two weeks in and we're on our way home. And I still feel exhausted, <laughs> like I didn't actually rest. So I, I can definitely see yes, you did, you did it that um, that's a message. You didn't rest. No. Because you didn't rest. <clears throat> and that's why you're having chest pains. Well, a lot more than... Yeah. A lot more than when I'm with the, the kids <laughs> or the four other kids. But definitely not nearly enough because I was just... Yeah, like I said, I, I keep finding people to pour in. I can myself work. But... I'm telling myself I'm doing patients and I'm doing all of the, the trauma healing and stuff that that is me taking time off. But that isn't taking time off. Your spiritual work is not taking time off. It's spiritual work. Hmm. Two separate things. What would be your What would be your most ideal day if you could... <clears throat> If you could imagine it, Tara, without anything. All I wanted is a massage. 
I've been like yearning for a massage. My body is in so much pain. <laughs> and I've been saying to myself, no, like I'm definitely going to do it. Yeah. I don't actually even think I know how to sing. Because when I sit and do, like, I tell myself, like, can I productively? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I definitely need think and else <laughs> so tara you do marketing don't you that's like what the work you do that's yeah, the type of I, work you do I've yeah so, so a bit yeah. like marketing you need to have a strategy now like you do in marketing you have to have a strategy for yourself and actually write down what that strategy is what you're going to be doing next week the following week after because i think if you don't write it down you're not going to do it mm -hmm. and you're going to have to hold yourself accountable Can't for doing it now because it's getting that serious that if you don't yeah. do it, you're going to end up quite ill. And I think we, mm. the last call we had with, with the same similar situation. So it's about you yeah. now making that, yeah, strategy, the ma the plan. <coughs> and sticking to it, yeah. like what are you doing on Monday for yourself? What are you going to do on Tuesday for yourself? And actually go see someone away from everyone, just you and the practitioner and allow them to help you and heal you and work with your body and release some of the stress you've had. You're going to feel mm -hmm. so much better when you regularly actually go for body releases. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, holy shit, why haven't I done this? Why the fuck haven't I done this? <laughs> and all of that trauma yeah, you experienced definitely. as well in Sorry. the body will be released. <laughs> all of that trauma you had will be released as well when you regularly go like rolfing, um, myofascia release. So I do have one more question. And I think I think it, that it's got s something to do with what you guys are talking about. Um, so I've been learning a lot about, um, you know, uh, your mind and how you interact with reality and everything. And I've always had like giant blocks in my abundance uh, or my 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 ability to to into my life, so it causes like it just feeds into this loop, you know, of never having enough time, never having enough money, never. And I I definitely had like up months where I felt like okay things are are going somewhere, and I'm I'm, you know, I, I've been listening to a lot of like Flood and Scovelshin and Abraham Hicks and all of those things. But I still feel like, you know, like I said, like even with the spirituality, this big block in front of me that no matter what I do, it's just not moving. <laughs> Sergeant and everything and myself, a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm just living in survival still. And I want you to know, like, is there anything specific that 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 you can see that I'm not doing, <laughs> or is it part of the same? Stop living the same, in survival. Like, learn how to play? Yeah, it's a choice. Yeah. yeah. Stop living in survival. Find worthiness. Because you have an overactive mind and you can't settle down, you're externalizing all of your different choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is just part of the same thing. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. And when you do yeah. all of that shit, everything will balance yeah. out. All of that will be easier. So instead of focusing on that, do the stuff you need to do first, then that will balance out. Everything will be, you'll receive more and see more clarity and, and feel more inspired when you actually get the work done on yourself and actually relax. It's almost a case of stop some of that all the studying and the spiritual stuff you're doing and just live. Just find some joy in, in a normal life without being so heavily into the spiritual stuff or having to having to fix yourself like that or having to have that abundance. Because when you let go of the outcome, the need for the outcome, when you let go of all that, life flows. But you're a little way from that, that nice flow that you can get into if you just let go of everything else. Just let go and just live and just find yeah. happiness and joy where you can. Like be a kid, like Andrew said, get rid of the, the serious stuff. I've been there, Tara. I know exactly how it is. I've been there. 
And I'm still working on. Laura's Lester. removed a few stumps in her time. Yeah, I'm still, as soon as I let go, the magic happens. Yeah, as soon as I let go of the trying energy, it's this earnest trying energy that that is is that's what's causing the blocks. Let go and find some happiness, some joy in what you do. And the fear, <laughs> does that ever go away? The fear? Or like, do you just learn? Yeah, because like, like that, that's if what's... If you find like, worth, okay, if you... F okay, today I'm just going to... No, if mm -hmm. you find worth, the fear will go away. Yeah, yeah. Right now you're living off of fear. That is your food. Your food, your daily food is fear. That's what's keeping you alive right now. And that's why life is well, the way it is right now. You can't live off of fear frequency. You, you need to process what we Thank said. You. And yeah. go back and listen and re-listen, listen and re-listen, listen and re-listen. And, re and probably actually transcribe word for word what we've all said to you. And what you'll discover is you will edit the words that we're saying so that you don't are successful. Your 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 mind will change words, and you have to go word by word by word by word, and watch yourself try to break the frequency of the words we're giving you. Any anything more we give you is going to come back to what what's going on from the very beginning. You are not worthy. Yeah. But um, right down. Go, go just and one process, more question. Go and yeah. process this. No, no, no. You, 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 anything else? As I said, it's okay. Come back you're not worthy. Time for time for empowerment okay. now. All right, you can do it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you're you. Welcome. Have a I good love one. you guys nice so much. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so for calling awesome. in, Tara. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you, Tara. Bye bye. So we next have on. We have got Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Are you there? Hey, friends. Jeff. Hey, Jeff. How's it going? I'm doing great, guys. Hey. So my question is, uh, what responsibility do we have to our parallel reality selves? Nothing. Okay. Mm. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Nothing. I feel like there was one Next that... question. <laughs> okay, I can do another question, but yeah. Um, uh, oh, question. What is... What is like a mature understanding of free will? I feel like I've been doing a lot of work recently on reclaiming my free will. And we talked about free will in the webinar. Right. That's one of the best explanations you're going to get when it comes to free will. Okay. Free will is an ch individual choice. And free will is also a deep understanding of the 30,000 foot point of view. And you are responsible for your level of awareness and your level of awareness is equal to your responsibility, which is part of the equation for worthiness, the equation for free will. Are you worthy to use your free will or not? And the equation right. of free will is based off of our levels of awareness and our responsibilities to it. Yeah. When we want to make positive, life-changing processes within us, we have to commit to that journey. And that commitment is not mystical. Courage is not mystical. They're individual choices that summon an inner strength to be sovereign in, in yourself to make those changes. Yeah, something I noticed where it's like uh, there was a, a part of me that it was like using struggle and fear to survive and just using that to feed off it could always manifest negative outcomes or negative negative expectations but and i could always construct a reality for which that was true for me but i really just had to just say like i what if i just decided to construct a reality that was different from that that i believed in and i can choose to believe in that reality you know a positive one so i've i feel like june for me was really like a spiritual bankruptcy in a way i filed like spiritual personal bankruptcy and i have just been sort of going and undergoing like a rehab lately where i'm just kind of like trying out fun things and doing fun things and putting myself out there just to like live a little you know that's why in some of the sessions i talked to you before is you got to get out and go places and do things and find those pilgrimages and find those friends to do that 
Mm-hmm. It was a vital part of your spiritual growth, and it's still. And in fact, you're probably doing too much spiritual work and not enough, not enough of the other part of living life work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's. I think I've improved. I've made some improvements lately, but yeah, it is something I realize. Like I, I, I yeah, it's not just about when healing. I when I look at your energy. Okay, there there is not dopamine releases around community is people who feed back energy to you Mm -hmm. okay you don't have a group of people to hang out with and metaphorically play board games with like you weren't a kid right you need that in your life okay Mm -hmm. you know maybe it's time to sponsor gaming night at your house and fight people over or, or find something similar to that concept where there's that that friendship of competition. You know, it's not competing against each other for a negative. It's just having fun with each other. Yeah, we went and played this game, and you know what? Hell yeah, I beat you, you beat me. Or, you know, that's you know one of the reasons I play World of Warcraft is because there's a bunch of people I can play with mm-hmm. and have fun with and just let down and not have to be Andrew the Galactic Historian. Can I ask, Jeff, what do you do to actually let down and relax? Because it's like, as I'm reading you, it's like there's a competition in yourself where you can't actually fully let down and relax and let go. Um, oh, yeah, like pretty much. Yeah, It's like you Pre- compete yeah. with yourself to do it and you kick yourself out of that state all the time. It's like you're about to go into it, but then all of a sudden something will come into you and kick you out. Um, what's, what type of practices do you actually do to fully let go So and surrender? I- I feel like I am in the midst of like learning that and allowing myself to learn that currently. Cause for a long time, I, I just wouldn't, I would, I was just single-mindedly focused on this path and it was frankly miserable. And so like, I think I was, I'm currently just trying to allow myself to do new things. Like I went to ecstatic dance a few days ago just to like, like not judge myself, like just allow myself to move in, in a group of people, you know, like, what's that like? And then I, the other day I went to the beach just to like, what if, would it be like if I just like didn't judge my body, you know? And like, I just allowed myself to just be, you know, and, and accepted myself, you know? So I, I think mm-hmm. I'm just kind of doing certain things that old me definitely would never have done and mm-hmm. seeing where that kind of, if that leads me to the next step, the next step. Yeah. And maybe do you have, the, do you have a, do you have, oh, sorry, Amy, go ahead. I just wanted to tell him that maybe the next step is to take someone with you next time mm-hmm. instead of going to these places by yourself. Yeah. Take, take people. Yeah. When you, when you were younger, did you ever do land parties? Uh, no, not really. I've been to a couple when I was younger, but not, it wasn't like a habitual thing. Do you have any friends that would be interested in the land party? Potentially. Um, all kind or of, have you have you abandoned those friends? I have somewhat abandoned them because I didn't necessarily know how to relate to them anymore. And yeah, I yeah. So you judged them? Yeah, I mean, I guess that would be true. Yeah. So you do have something in common. You need to be able to disconnect with them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to reconnect to those people. Okay. okay. Land parties are a great way to do it or get in the cycle of online gaming with them or physical gaming, Dungeons and Dragons, tabletop gaming. Even if you're gaming with people on Zoom, you know, they that's a new big thing, big thing to do, role playing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So free will. Yes. Oh, sorry, Andrew. Go. He you overjudge yourself too. I do. I do, yeah. I realized I had to, like June. I I had I, I was holding on to an idealism, and I had to really surrender. I had essentially, it's like this, these are not mine to hold. Like these aren't for me to hold, you know. And I just had to like I just need to allow myself to find out who I am, like who I really am, you know, without like having these preconceived notions or expectations for myself, you know. So, Jeff, so how we use our free will is based on the choices we make. And for you, you could look at your choices and whether they make you feel better. It's really quite simple in some ways. Do the choices make you feel good? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I mean, I feel like I had a part of me that wouldn't let me enjoy anything. And I've been working with that part and it's gotten better. I do think it's gotten better, but it is a part of me that just for some reason enjoyed struggle, enjoyed or only trusted struggle or was mm-hmm. only comfortable and familiar with struggle. So I just, I'm really just like, to me, an ideal day <laughs> would be like <laughs> not having a single worry come, like and literally doing anything and not having a, a worry come in, in my mind and me having to like wrestle with it, you know, or whatever. But um, yeah. It feels so to me- then there's the choice to wipe that particular worry from your mind, isn't it? And that right. again is using your free will to make that choice. To I think Andrew's talked about to to wipe out things that you don't want there using the galactic sun. You can see the galactic sun shining there. Wipe out that. Make that choice to do that, and then make that that sovereign free will choice. To, to think of something else or bring something else into your reality. Free will is about setting up your own reality. Yeah, I think I one thing I realized is I can change the narratives that I tell myself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I've been playing with that recently. Also, Jeff, I to me, this is my opinion, but I see your brain move so fast. Yep. Fast that it that you you talk yourself into something like, oh, I'm gonna go do this, and it just automatically talks you right out of it faster than you can even think about it. It's already, it feels to me like it moves that fast. It's um, like yeah. he's strategizing and it's yes. about you now return. There's always a strategy with yourself and you actually, it's, it's going back to that kind of like simplicity mm-hmm. of self-love, like just the mm-hmm. basic teachings of self-love because it's like when you're about to do something, you strategize something, then it takes you off to another path, to the next path and you and actually then- completely forget about yourself. Yeah, and you're confused, and it just, yeah, I, I feel that really, hard. Uh, I can feel that now. No, yeah, I agree. Every time before I would, like, do something, it would be, like, me imagining <laughs> how it goes <laughs> and the, the, the <laughs> ways that it could go, you know? And it's, like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, forget about it. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't have care heard, anymore. Have you heard us talk about the inner dickhead? You know, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. What do you think you can do to slow? He has a twin inner dickhead. It's when it's when. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you think you can outsmart your brain? Oh. How, what would be a good? Only you know your brain, so yeah, if you can think about how to slow it down. Like it's almost like I wish I could turn it off. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I don't know that I can outsmart it. It's always it's always coming up with things that I, yeah, it's always bringing things up to the front that. Or maybe you just need to tell it to shut the fuck up. Yeah. (laughs) How's your dream? Are your dreams like that too? Or do you really do shut your brain off when you're... No, I mean, um, I I do get a number of dreams and I don't necessarily understand them all or why I necessarily have some of the ones that I do. (laughs) But um, yeah, sometimes... I think if I'm like really tired, so I've been exercising recently. Mm. So I went on a run and also I've been doing my rowing recently. And if I'm tired, then I will definitely not remember my dreams or my dreams will just seem hazier. And so mm-hmm. like, maybe that's more restful sleep, but I don't know. All right. I want to invite you to come play World of Warcraft with, with us on Friday nights. Okay. Well, I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Just contact I think we're on the same server, it. actually. Are you on Sagaris? No, I'm on Kalth- Kalthazad. Oh, no, I, I might be on. Oh yeah, we'll see. Okay, we can still yeah. play with you. They have cross server. They have the allow cross server playing now. Okay, yeah, I'll join. We insult everyone on a regular basis. I don't know if you listen to any of our game streams. Uh, yeah, I've watched a few actually. <laughs> yeah. We we have we have fun with our with our characters. Yeah, yeah. I think I am. I'm not max level. I did play Dragonflight for a little bit, but I, I'm pretty close to max level. I think I'm like 78 or something or whatever it is. Well, we, we, we don't really play around with the high levels. I mean, we still have, oh, okay. we have high levels, but right now we're just trying to get a bunch of characters to a different level, so we always have something fun to do on our Fridays. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Like the other day we played, we all started uh, level one monks, so we had five monks. And then we did five druids, and then we did five warriors, and we just blasted through the game. It's had a lot of fun. Yeah, sounds good to me. I have a question. I have a question, Jeff. So you came on, and you asked that first question, right? Yeah. The parallel, are we responsible for our parallel? Okay, so who was that asking that question? Was that your brain? 
I had a dream about that? a month ago that was strange, and then I f had like a presence, I think, a few days ago that seemed like it was from that dream, and I was just like, what, why is, is it influencing my reality? And so I just had a conversation with it, and I'm like, I, I can't do what you're asking, you know, or whatever. And so I was like, I was just wondering, like, well, how should I, if I was interacting with a parallel version of myself, how should I interact with myself, you know? But Mm -hmm. And what should or should I not do for myself, so to speak, right? You are not responsible for your other parallel selves. You are responsible to your level of awareness, and your level of awareness is equal to your level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Okay. You got to make that an internal brain mantra. Mm -hmm. Do not work beyond your ability to be responsible to it. Otherwise, you find yourself working in territories that have far more... Um, weighted challenges then you're able to be responsible for yeah 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 hmm. well thank you very much i don't yeah. actually have any other questions currently but these are all good all ideas right. and i appreciate thank, it thanks for calling thanks, in Jeff. Bye, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. thank you see you soon so this if you want to call into the show the link is in the chat um, how are you all doing, guys? Really good show so uh, far. Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good. Doing good. It looks like anyone you... else there, Dale? Is anyone no, else in the not chat? At the moment. So, if you wanted to come in to have a reading, so the link is in the chat for you. Just come into the restream room for a reading. We dare you, chicken shits. I see. HSP Innovator says, "How do we call in?" The link, just click on the link or copy it link. into your URL. Come on in, HSP. <laughs> so, so, guys. Yeah. So, so, so. I was going to ask, interesting how um, people forget to eat. <laughs> it's not interesting. It's a. Well, not a hard and human, to me. It's a hard and human fact. Yeah. I, I, I see it so often, and it's, for so many people, it's a fundamental internal character flaw mm -hmm. or spiritual flaw, whatever, whatever. It's a flaw. And they justify the not eating for whatever reason. Yeah. Okay? There we go. Women do it more than men. Mm -hmm. It's. it's yeah. But a women deal with a different set of emotions than men do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we've got a call, the guys. Oh, okay. Laura Ann. Laurie Ann, sorry, is coming on. Hello, Laurie Ann. Are you there? I am here. How are you? Good. Great. How are you Where doing? are you calling from? I'm calling from Ottawa, Canada. It's not the US, but. <laughs> it's okay. We had a call from South Africa earlier. Oh, cool. I think I'm hearing two people talking at the same time. Do you have something in the background playing the show? I'm here. We're not getting any echo from you, so I don't hear any echo. Were you watching the show on something else? And on this? That might be the echo. <laughs> yeah, that... Mm -hmm. That happened to me. <laughs> no. Are you still getting the echo now? It was like it was pre-recorded or something. On so oh, I was watching the show on something else. Let me close that one. There yeah, we go. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the aha moment right there. <laughs> we got that. We've, we got that. We've got that. I've done that. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it, this was really spontaneous. Actually, I was in the middle of a work day and and I saw my YouTube live come on the notification. I was like, oh, cool. I Let me join. I have a little bit of time to free up here. So I just what really do do for work? wanted to um my title is network operation specialist i monitor people's voice networks their telephony and okay. stuff like that yeah 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 work is good 
I have no complaints about work. I, I feel I don't feel like I want to develop though. Okay. So what like questions I just, do you I like have for the us? Status quo. Um, actually, my question is uh, really about my mother-in-law. She's 76. She's got dementia. And uh, the whole family is kind of, you know, trying to figure out how to handle her. But my husband's really stressed about her. And it just feels like this is the biggest thing that's happening in my life right now is... Okay. Is my... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a metaphor for you. Mm -hmm. Your mother-in-law is a prickly porcupine. Yes. <laughs> but a porcupine is one of the kindest animals out there. Yes. You will never be stung by its quills if you trust it and it trusts you. Mm -hmm. The quills only go when there's fear. Your husband mm -hmm. is afraid to take action. The family is afraid to take action. And mm -hmm. internally, you know to take action, but you're afraid that her quills will go up and she'll reject your statements. And then the family will be diametrically opposed to the truth of what needs to happen next. Right. That right. I feel she like needs she's to have the... care 24 7, and the family cannot do it because they're not capable of doing the type of care that she actually needs. Correct. I agree with that completely. Okay. And they're all toiling with the, who's going to do it, who's going to get stuck with taking care of mom. Yeah. So they, they do have a uh, memory care center lined up for this Friday coming. To actually put her in a center? To put her in a center. Okay. Yeah. Have they tried this before? Yes. <laughs> but no, I, I say yes, but no, because it was a completely different scenario. The last time they tried to put her in a, in a, in a facility, it wasn't a memory care center where she really needed a memory care center. So she kept trying to escape through the, you know, the fire escape route. So, uh -huh. so they rejected her, but, um, but no, you know, I, the I same thing, the same thing's going to happen to this next place. If she's an escaper, yeah, the 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 facility is going to kick her out within five months. Oh no, <laughs> their insurance <laughs> cannot handle it. Okay. 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 And you need to confront your husband, not the family, mm -hmm. and say, inevitably, they're they're going to come up with this again. She needs to go to a full care Alzheimer's dementia ward that has memory care. Okay. With tracking devices that they put on mm -hmm. the patients. Oh, tracking devices. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. If she's an escape artist, their insurance yeah. can't handle it. Literally their insurance. One police report a year. Literally, they could lose their entire their medical oh, insurance. I never even thought of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, okay. So okay. I had to deal with this because my grandmother, she wasn't an escaper, but mm -hmm. she would sit at the chair right at the front desk waiting mm -hmm. for the, the, the taxi to come. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. And but she after been... six weeks, she, she began to forget about the journey and enjoyed being there. Okay. Your grand, your mother-in-law is not going to be one of those. Okay. And you need to begin counseling your partner about this. And yeah. the best way for the family to deal with it is how many family members live close? Uh, her sister's, you know, 15 minutes away. Um, she has a niece as well that's close okay. by. And We're the, the closest. Children? My husband and I were, were 15 minutes away. So really only three people that can visit. And she has uh, a, a committed friend who, in, you know, she's committed. So she four. visits her. Yeah, four of us. All right. You guys need to have a rotating schedule. Somebody goes Monday. Somebody goes Wednesday. Somebody goes Friday. And somebody goes Saturday or Sunday or Saturday, Sunday. Okay. And so she doesn't go more than a day, a full day and a half without seeing someone. Okay. 
and you need to bring food with you, mm -hmm. even if it's just nibbles, whatever, mm -hmm. so that there's something left in the room with her. Okay, even if she doesn't remember who brought it, it's something that she's like in that and, and then that and then if they allow her room to be decorated, decorate her room with as much of her own stuff as possible. Right. And just be prepared that this escape artist is going to continue. Okay. And there's no way for you to counsel her out of it. No. But you can counsel your husband. You can counsel yeah. your partner and get him ready for the inevitability that it's going to be challenging. Yeah. Okay. 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 So I have a lot to put in perspective and I, I can feel organized when talking and, and that's a great idea about the rotating schedule. Yeah. Okay. And I'll stay, you know, I'll keep in contact, you know, on like, you know, WhatsApp or whatever, you know, and you could trade days around and make sure always somebody's always bringing something with them. Right. It could be flowers too. You know, mm -hmm. it can be something from her house. Every week you guys bring something new and leave it there if they're allowed to have real full room decorations. Okay. Good. That that helps me. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. I, I Do don't really questions? sorry? Do you have any more questions at all? Not really, no. I I don't. <laughs> This is the only thing that's really happening in my life that's that's a little stressful, and I know it's well, very you're stressful. Well, you're lucky. Happen. You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's it's funny. Not a lot of things stress me out, but I, I don't like this. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. That's what everybody says. The, the people like having me around, but um, my uh, my son has a friend who moved in with us just after his 18th birthday because his mom kicked him out and yeah. he had nowhere to go. So he ended up with us and he even had a broken leg when his mom kicked him out. So we took him in and one of the conditions was is that he tries to work mm. when he when his leg got better and um, he gets his, he completes his high school diploma. Those were the only is two his, conditions. Is his leg better? Is his leg better yet, or what? Yes, it is. It healed quite uh, quite well, and he's joined jujitsu, and apparently he's doing really well in jujitsu. And mm -hmm. um, Does he have you know, a job? No, oh, that's the problem. <laughs> that uh, he's terrible at keeping jobs. Um, my son has really had it over his head. He's like, okay, I want to kick him out. He doesn't want his friend here anymore because. Now he feels like he's taking advantage of us. How long has he been there now? Uh, two years. Oh, yeah. It's, it's that yeah. taking advantage level. Yeah, because he's 20 now. So, you know, he's we're, we're giving him the, okay, you, gotta, you have two weeks to find a full-time job and contribute uh, some money towards the household by August 1st, or that's it. You he's going to go. move on. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. So I'm 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 at ease with that and I'm okay with that. Yep. And, but he's a terrible. You gave worker. him two you gave him <laughs> two years of care to turn his life around. And he did, and he got his high school diploma, and I'm very happy for that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, that you know, Brandon was one of our one of uh something that was more abnormal. We we did now have custody of my mother in law's dog. And he's a little Lulu, but he's all right. He barks a lot. I'm gonna try. So no, I don't have any more questions. And I just wanted to say I really enjoy your show. I do listen to pop in every now and then and try to listen as much as I can. And um, I I really do appreciate everything that you all guys right. guys say and do. Thank you. Thanks we appreciate calling. it. Too. Thanks for Thank you, me. Laurie. Okay. Thank you. Speak soon. Thank so you. We have next on we have thomas hello thomas are you there hello everyone um it's an honor to be on here with you i'm really surprised i got in where are you calling are you? from I'm, I'm calling from uh hudson wisconsin usa ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. So what questions um, do you have for us? Uh, you know, two, two quick ones. Um, basically, about 10 years ago, I started doing energy healing work, and I was trained on remote viewing. And uh, after a couple of months of doing those things, I went to a group meditation where at one point there was probably about 20 of us meditating and we were in a circle holding hands. And I saw a few minutes into it, I saw the Kuiper belt region region of uh, our solar system and saw this huge, uh, I guess, I guess you could say a mothership, but mostly of what I could see was like a white glowing ball of light. And then I, got the impression that there were, you know, 20 plus different races there. And so I'm curious if any of you have seen that, you know, part of our solar system and gotten anything similar to that. Who and you, how did you train in remote viewing? Where did you oh, train uh, for? Basically, um, for about three years before that, um, this uh, guy, uh, Courtney Brown, he's a, uh, PhD. I forgot what it's in, but he has I know, a. Who, I know. I know who Courtney is. Yeah, he, he has a remote viewing website. So I I did a lot of his training videos. Um, I read his book, Cosmic Explorers, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and then I practiced, and remote viewed the Draco reptilian homeworld from the coordinates out of his book just to see if I could do it a little bit later. So it's like, all right, well, I guess I guess I can do this. And that's a whole nother story there, but, uh, mostly his, his work. And then I did follow some of Russell Targ's instructions that I'd seen in a few YouTube videos. And also in 2015, a friend of mine from Sweden, uh, her name's Jenny. She's, she does some amazing energy healing work too. She's really psychic and all that. And, you know, she went over a few things with me and, you know, I basically practiced on three different targets, you know, saw Mars and uh, beach in Brazil, you know, it was kind of funny kind of random so I, um before we get into the ball of light and the kuiper belt sure how often do you practice your remote viewing uh you know it's been a couple of months around that time probably like twice a week and then whenever i send reiki to people or you know their pets or whatnot i automatically do it like i'll see the area i'll see where they're at I'll see, you know, their house and but you're not that. following the standard protocols of entering the uh, space and you're not having a secondary observation person with you. Uh, I've only had the secondary observation person with me like twice. So, yeah, usually it's usually I write down uh, someone's birth information, you know, their full birth name and their date of birth. And I focus on that after I've been meditating for a few minutes. And that's how I tune into them or that's how I tune stop, into the location. Stop, hold on. Stop calling that remote viewing. Sure. Okay. That's not, that's not remote viewing. Mm -hmm. It will help you greater to give it a different terminology. Okay. Now, during your experience, you were with a group of people that were mass meditating. Why yeah. had they, why had they gathered? What was the reason of everybody doing it? Oh, uh, basically it was a group called spirit walkers in, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, where I used to live and we would get together and there'd be different healers, some shamans there. And one person would talk about astrology for like the months. Another person would talk about herbs, uh, you know, things like oh, yeah. that. And then, and then there'd be like group meditation. There'd be, you know, shaman drumming circle afterward. And, you know, okay. it was a very positive, positive get together. And how far into the group meditation did the Kyber belt image appear? Uh, I would right say into it. I would say probably about two minutes into it. Yeah, I think about two minutes into it. And did you talk to the twenty different races that were there, or did you just get that as an upload of wisdom? I I got it as an upload, and then I saw a couple of flash images of what I believed was like a reptilian humanoid, a feline humanoid, and an insectoid being. All right. Once again, you're not remote viewing that. You're you're doing a different like, psychic skill. Okay. Um, All right. Have you ever tried to go and look again? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I should. I, I did break out with a pendulum a couple of times, just to right. see what what kind of yes or no answers I would get, and it right. 
it's blocked. Whenever I try to right. do that, it just nothing. I don't yeah, get an answer. My, my advice to you <laughs> is to, you, you need to disregard the pendulum for your work. Okay. It's not going to lead you into the direction that you want. Cool. This is about solidifying inner validation without external validation. Sure. Um, before I give you anything about the Kyber belt and the, and the things there, mm -hmm. I'm going to say you need to regularly revisit that image attempting remote viewing the way you were trained with a person okay. and then doing it without the remote viewing protocols and understand there's two different forms of observation and communication that's going on there. And you learn to need to learn to separate the two or they're going to blend and confuse the shit out of you. Yeah. And that's actually what happened during your journey. During that time, you were letting down, you were having fun, you were with friends, people that you felt felt in trust, and a psychic skill turned down through the lens of remote viewing. So it didn't okay. give you a complete form of communication. Um, the group, when they were all circled in hands, it raised a frequency inside you that activated a part of your DNA that has high level communications with these beings in your dream space. So your consciousness entered Delta dream space and they, these beings deal with you on a regular basis in dream, but you're not consciously aware of them as the awakened dream human. Does that make okay. sense? Oh uh, yeah, it does. Um, yeah. That, that goes into my second question whenever you're done. Okay. Um, so you did experience them. They are real, but you're also at a now what stage. Mm -hmm. And the, for the fact that it didn't prima facie appear to you that I should go and remote view it and try it again and again, meaning there's something inside you that's not fully trusting you. Yep. Skeptical. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's more than skeptical. Okay? It's more than skeptical. It's almost a debilitative aspect of skepticism. Yeah, like I'm doubting being able to do that and see that kind of uh, thing. Let's say let's say doubt is an un, is not a, not a serious enough word. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay? All right. It's easy to remote to do pets and healing and stuff like that. But there's a responsibility that comes with communicating with beings off world who mm -hmm. could very easily present you with information that could be completely life altering to you, which could change the course of your pre planned human journey. Could lead you down a path of a decade of not doing what you were supposed to be doing on this world. Or it could be what you're supposed to be doing this world. But somehow, some way, you bypassed the dream space, the the the, awa the awakened space, and went into the dream space while you were in the connected hands from the high frequency. So, is that meant to happen? The answer is yes, but it's always going to be now what? Now what? Now what? After every experience, now what? Now what? What's the strategy? What's the plan? And you can no longer operate on the no plan plan when it comes to your skill set that's beginning to develop you know, out of baby steps and into adult capacity to use it for the good. Yep. That's spot on. Yep. Okay. What, what's your other question? Yeah. Uh, basically I, I wanted to, uh, mention that part of it, uh, where you said, you know, like, how do you use this for the benefit of humanity? Because I've had interactions <clears throat> with the grays uh two other times and i remote viewed or i guess maybe partially remote viewed uh one of the times i had uh spoken with uh i had remote viewed the draco homeworld this reptilian female showed me all these images of their planet their society and uh a little bit later like a month later i remote viewed series a or b i don't remember which one and an interaction with a feline humanoid she told me they were cousins of our race and they try to help us when they can and so it's like how do i use these things 
you know, to help the planet. And uh, you don't. you're not okay. at that level of responsibility yet. You haven't okay. mastered the skill enough. You haven't developed the inner healing skills for you or skills that you want to advance skills you want to use on clients before you work with high energy beings. You got to give it the due diligence time of mastering the communication skills here physically first. And while at the same time, dual tracking, yes, I can communicate. Now I need to make friends up there. I need to know what, what life is like for them. I don't need to know the galactic information that's going to change the universe right now. I need to sure. learn how to trust this being and trust myself that I'm actually communicating with this being. You need to learn how to become friends with them and them to become friends with you through a state of communicative trust. Sure. So yeah, you really I mean, need to know the yeah. trivial things about them, not the mm -hmm. super galactic, super questions all the time. You got to learn to just be with them. Would you would you even recommend that with like the short gray type aliens? Like I had interaction with them in probably like 1994, and and I've kind of bounced back and forth with okay, do I try to communicate with these ETs or just kind of put it off to the side? Is it is it really going to help my life or, so you know, 30, benefit humanity? 30 years ago, thir so 30 years ago, you had a communication and you're yeah. wanting to know if thir a communication from 30 years ago is still valid today. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. You know, can I, you don't, you don't see the error. You don't see the error in that logic. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh... in 30 years, <laughs> in 30 years, you never tried again. Well, I, I kind of, I, I had quite a few years where I wasn't sure if it really happened. You know, was it my imagination? Was I just dreaming it? But when you said things communicating with me in the dreamscape or dream dream reality, I thought, well, maybe maybe that was it. So still, thirty mm -hmm. years you never retried. Uh, no, not to communicate with them. Okay. You need to pick one. Okay. Not the Dracos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna end up fucking you in the ass hard okay? <laughs> you're gonna be a spiritual prison carrying a spiritual prison wallet for them okay yeah, no thanks yep okay all right you need to work with beings here on earth first okay okay you need to work with your healing guides and guardians build up that communicated and trust and you know the fact that you learned remote viewing from a guy that's a UFO experiencer, that was meant to happen. But over these last many years, you were supposed to refine the skill, and you haven't. You're at a stage now where you have to have a hardened commitment and courage to develop the two separate skills, the raw psychic in you and the remote viewer. They are two different modalities. Okay, it would be a really good idea for you to look up. Um, who is that? That group? The um, they got the big university for remote viewing. What's what's the name of that place? Uh, I think I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the name either. Something institute. Something institute. I forgot. Okay. They they regularly have remote viewing classes that you go to. You need to go to a remote viewing class. Like like the Monroe Institute. Yeah, Monroe Institute. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Very good for you to do. Go go to an actual class. Okay. Okay. Sit with the teachers. Sit with the other people. See their firms of experience, and and solidify the protocols in you, and just let your raw psychic side develop while you're doing Reiki, while you're trying to develop a clientele and work with this world. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate all of the work that you guys do. And I've been following everything you've all been doing for about three years now. So let me ask you thank a you. question. What do you, what do you do You're for right. work? Oh, what do I do for work? Um, I'm an uh, ELL teacher. I teach uh, middle school to high school during the week. And then I do, I try to do a couple of Reiki sessions a week. Sometimes I do expos in Mankato, Minnesota with uh, one of my two of my friends that are shaman healers and also, you know, do Reiki as well. All right. 
it would be a really good idea for you to go and um, have some rolfing dumb. R O L F I N. Do you know what that is? Yes, yes, I do. Um, do a ten series. And okay. Then after that, it would be a very, very good idea for you to go and learn the next modality that you want. It can be hypnosis, quantum healing, quantum touch, cranial sacral therapy, myofascial release. You need to start adding to your your skill base. Okay. Okay? And make it a journey. Every year you add another skill base to yourself. All right. Even if I will. you want to do two or three a year, that's fine. Expand, 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 expand the skill base. Because you're at a stage where hyper growth and hyper non growth can happen in you. And you're at a stage you have to initiate the growth so you could have hyper growth. Okay. Yeah, that all makes perfect sense. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. You guys take care. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, Thomas. Take it easy. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for Bye. coming in, Thomas. Take care. Bye. So, guys, we are at oh. the end of the show. What a great show. Yes. Yeah. Very fun. So, for those listening as well, we appreciate if you could subscribe, drop a comment, drop a like. We really appreciate all your support and thank you for listening. Uh, Laura, how can people get hold of you for sessions and so on? Okay, so if you're stuck on your spiritual journey, if you'd like me to help you, give you a, a kick up the backside in a, a gentle way, <laughs> re to reconnect yeah, with your right. ancestors, or connect with your ancestors because they're always there, or go to your ancestral fire. Um, I've got so many different shamanic skills that I can teach you. So look up twofeathersmedicine.com or contact me by email, Laura Two Feathers with the number two at gmail.com. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Andrew? You go to my website, andrewbartzis.com. I've got all my information there. You can book a session with me. You can also look up our live event we're going to be having in October, and it's up in the QR code in the top left corner. Mm hmm. Thanks, Andrew. Amy? Yes, you can reach me at the UCM community with, there's an echo, with David Ellis and I at community.universalcitizentv.com. Um, and you can reach me by email at pinkmoonlodgepodcast at gmail.com. Thank you. So if you'd like a psychic surgery myself, you'd like me to psychically remove the stump out of your ass. <laughs> head over to daletobin.com. I'm also running a psychic surgery training on the July the 13th and 14th. So if you'd like to learn psychic surgery with me as well, head over to the website with all the information on there. So yeah, thank you everyone for listening and watching. Good night. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.